checking out the logs, trying to see what was complaining here. Uh, da, 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 API URLs, line 15, it's complaining about. This is not the right file. Uh, API URLs, there we go. Line 15. Ah, right. Uh, that's here, though. Why? Why is that complaining? Permissions is not defined. Is it misspelled? No, right there. Hmm. Did something change? Uh, let's go to the equivalent file that I had before. URLs. It hasn't spelted. Oh, that. This is spelted that we're looking at. This is going to be. This is bad. I should get rid of that other thing. Um, yes, there we go. That is the problem. So I don't have it over here where I need it. Okay, so that ought to f sort itself out. Include is not defined. But that's great. Um, include. View is not defined. Wonderful. Because uh, I can't spell anything right the first time. That is here. Um, that should be views. Plural. OK. Cool. So now Django is happy. Um, so if I go here, I should see the screen that we had before. Um, API v1 docs is what we're looking for. I don't want it in HTTPS, I want it in normal. Womp. No such tangle chain of session. Ah, yes, it's because we didn't do any migrations. Um, so when we add, wait, what? Ah, um, okay, so this was a vanilla Django project. So did I do my, did I do what was needed to get, um, to get authentication itself up and running? Is, is Django authenticating anything? Um, and for that, uh, let's go to the Django, uh, let's go to the docs, uh, how do we look this up in the docs? Um, hmm. Yeah, so there's a Django auth system. Django authentication. User authentication in Django. Django is outstanding because of its documentation um, and because of its community. So basically, there's always something. There's always a, there's always a document that you can find to or a Stack Overflow question, or you can go to the Discord channel for Discord for for Django. Uh, there's always some, there's always someone to help. Uh, there's always someone willing to help. There's always someone who's asked that question before and who's gotten an answer and had it recorded somewhere. Somebody's made a blog post or something. Uh, or somebody wrote an app to help you do it in the first place. Um, so that's that's the reason that I think that Django is, is really incredible. And I'm sure you could say the same thing about any number of other frameworks that exist out there. 
um, but you know I I like this one a lot so um, using Django's default implementation do, do, do. Do, do, do. So this is all the sort of how to. Um, I'm looking for like how to how to make sure it's turned on. Which is probably this right here. Authentication support is bundled as Django contrib module. Do, do, do. Router calls require configuration is already included in settings. I think it's two items listed in your installed apps. So we need Django contrib auth and Django contrib content types, and then these middleware settings. So let's put these together on the screen so we can look at that at the same time. So here is my project. I have contrib auth, I have contrib content types, I've got session middleware. With these settings in place, running the command manage.py migrate. That's my, that's where I run a foul here. Um, so let me close this out. I want to perform some steps within the um, within the Django shell, right? So the way to get at that, the hard way here is to use Docker Compose. Um, my project is called. Django, is it? What do I make file? Uh, Django, it's hyphen spelt demo. Yeah, let me just copy all that. Um, in fact, it's really close to what I'm doing here with shell, right? I want to get that, and I want to. Um, Instead of execing sh like I did in the other command, I want to exec um, python uh, slash manage py shell. And that should take me into the container into the Django shell. Um, actually, wait, I don't. I don't know. I don't definitely don't want to be in the Django shell. That's that's my mistake. But while I'm here, knowing that I may want to do that in the future, I'm just going to go ahead and put a new directive in the make file Django shell, and that will from now on allow me to get the Django shell without having to use the Docker compose command at all. So here I'm going to do make shell. That gets me into the container as it runs. Um, and from here, I can do manage um, make migrations. Uh, no, it actually didn't say make migrations. It just said migrate. Yeah, there we go. So that sets up the database uh, tables for um, those installed apps that we have. Um, yeah, and since this is the the very first time that I'm um, setting this thing up, uh, it's it's wanting me to do this now. In the future, I'd like to not have to have a special step there to do this. So what I'm going to do is add to my make file. Whenever I build this thing, I'm going to actually, you know what? I'm going to set up a second a secondary um, directive from build. Build is supposed to just be for making the containers. Um, in it here I'm going to say uh, we're going to take, I want to do that thing, um, I want to do it in the app so I'll just copy what I have for Django shell down here and put that up front and that is going to now uh, cr do that first migration to make sure that all any migrations that exist in the project are done on your um, on your dev database and now uh, beyond that I'm gonna look back through what I had for build and this this step here um, 
that's actually an init step. I just put it in build because it was expedient. Um, I'm going to move it down here so that whenever uh, whenever you're starting up a, a new database or a new uh, uh, from whole cloth a new in, in, uh, instance of this app um, that you'll install the node dependencies in your node container. Um, in fact, I'm going to take a cue from this. Uh, it's using run instead of exec as the uh, docker compose subcommand. Um, I'm going to change this to run as well. Exec requires an, a running instance of the container, uh, whereas run will uh, create a container and do that thing. Um, the database is persistent across runs of the container. It exists as a as a SQLite file in, in this project. In other projects, it could be a, a separate container that's running that, that dev database. Um, but either way, it, that's all sort of permanent stuff, as is the installation of uh, the node dependencies. And that's because of how, I'm just going to go down a rabbit hole here for anybody who cares. Um, that's all because we've got uh, the, uh, the the volumes mounted from our actual file system. So whenever we install the dependencies here in the container, it's actually doing it here in our um, in our file system. So uh, yeah, actually happening right here. Now it's hidden because the node modules um, node modules folder itself is hidden. But it's it's there. Um, did I make a change? Cancel. Yeah, I definitely don't want any changes. Um, okay. This one, however, should be better now. Whenever we run init, it ought to do all the things that make our instance ready to go. Um, so let me get out of that shell that I was in and we will get back to what we was doing. What was we doing? Um, ah, right, we were trying to get the docs to show up. May run. That thing got going. Let's cross our fingers here. Yeah, I don't want it to be SSL. Keeps keeps doing that. Dang. Does not exist. Template. Why? Why does the template not exist? Where did it look? It looked in the right place for it. Why does DRF Yasig not have it? Oh, no, that was looking here. It looked here and here. So I would hope that there would be a user local lib python 3.8 site packages slash DRF Yasig um, slash templates slash swagger UI dot HTML. I would hope that that exists in this list but it's not it's not there um, that is probably because I didn't add DRF Yasig to our installed apps so DRF Yasig haha -ha. um, I'm gonna I'm gonna expect that that did a reload on um, on our app instance, yeah, so it did a reloader. Um, so let's see then if it works, not, keeps going SSL on me. I'm still not, I still want it insecure. There we go, cool. Um, so public, if we try it out, 
it should give us a uh, skid. Um, and if requires off, I'm not logged in in any way, shape, or form. There's not even a user that exists here. So try it out. Um, dang. Authentication credentials were not provided. Suck an egg. Um, so good. That's what we expect to happen. That's what we hope would happen. If we, you know, we could try it out more manually. Um, if we went to, you know, this actual URL, I'll do that in a new tab. It's going to say, oh, yeah, we don't. Dang. Django REST framework is even better than you expect it to be. It's like, it's like so good. So stinking good. Uh, yeah. Uh, there we go. If we get the format JSON, it gives us just the JSON package. And if we go to uh, requires off, it's going to say in the JSON authentication credentials were not provided. Sorry. Um, so that's excellent. Let's try it when we're logged in. Right? What does that look like? Um, well, we can try to log in. Let's go. Actually, let's just close this tab altogether. Um, and let's go here. And let's try authorize. Username and password. I don't have a username or password set up. That's cool. Um, not a problem. I'm going to go ahead and get back into a shell. And I'm going to say to the Django instance, um, let's create super user. Uh, it's asking me what username I want. I have this container running as root. It's not good security practice for a production um, environment, but this is just a, a demo. So uh, it doesn't need to be productionized. So no, I don't want to be root though. I'll be, I'll be Paul. Yeah, that'll be me. Uh, let's stick with matters. That's my internet persona after all. So um, these don't matter. So whatever. And then I just, you know, just give it a easy to type password. I, it'll complain about certain easy passwords, but it's pretty lenient on this uh, command line thing, um, especially on a on a vanilla Django setup. If you have password constraint set, um, then it'll observe those, of course. Anyways, so there we are. Uh, I have a username now. Go matters, and I'll give it that easy to type password. And cool. It says I'm. It says I'm there. So now let's try it again. Aha! It's good. Um, I like it. So that's good. Um, cool. That's step one down. We've got the API working. Uh, it's authenticating people. Um, and yeah. One second. Um, okay, back to back to what we got going here. Um, Right, so we have these API endpoints, and the ultimate goal was to create a Svelte component that we could put onto the page there that will consume that API. Um, so I've got my, uh, here, this is just, um, uh, this is a, this is a, if you're, if you're trying to use Django Svelte, um, then you'll need a you'll need an actual Svelte instance, right? So 
I'm providing here a template that you can use that's set up to, it's tweaked very slightly to um, uh, to work with Django Svelte just a little bit better. So, um, uh, yeah, so that's what this, that's what this folder is here. It's the, this, this, the Django Svelte template, um, just de-gitted into place here. Um, the default thing that's set up app dot svelte, uh, that's, that's all there, that's all there is in there. Um, but there's also rollup.config that's that's doing the um, this sort of meta work around Svelte to build the actual component. And in the in the rollup.config.js for this template, I've got um, this little list of components that will all be output as uh, JS and CSS bundles. Um, so auth component. Um, so I'm just going to create a new component there, and I'm going to go through all the steps to do so, um, starting with this app, main app .js, right? This is this is being referenced to produce the app bundle, and it's got some stuff in it that's specific to app, right? Like there's all these capital apps, and there's all these lowercase apps that are in there. Uh, so what I'm going to do is copy this, just duplicate it here. Uh, I'm going to give it the name main um, auth component. And here I'm just matching the name that I used in rollup.config.js. Inside of that, I'm going to change all of these. Let me. I want to change all these uppercase ones to be uppercase auth component. And I'm going to change all these lowercase ones to be lowercase auth component. The a lot of these don't matter. Um, like this particular one, the JavaScript variable called auth component doesn't matter. Um, this one this capital one here doesn't really matter it could stay as app nobody would be the wiser this one is critical as is this one these two inside of here very important I haven't come up with a good way to avoid this sort of manual setup step I'm you know if, if this package is spelt Django uh, Django spelt rather gets any traction then hopefully I can ask you know get like get some some contributors to help me with the Svelte side of things to clean that up a little bit because it's it's still kind of ugly. Um, it's, it's clanky. I don't think ugly is the right word. It's clanky. Um, so yeah, hopefully I can get rid of some of that clankiness at some point in the future. Um, anyways, uh, once that's completed, uh, it's going to be looking for that auth component dot Svelte. So I'm going to go ahead and create that um, new file. And then in here, I just want to do a script tag. Um, I know that there's an excellent um, uh, um, Svelte plugin for uh, VS Code. Um, I think that the one for Sublime is uh, it could be better. You know, I don't want to throw a bunch of shade out here, um, but could be a little bit better anyway um, and maybe if I, if I, I can document where when I see those things um, as they come up anyway um, here I just want to have you know like um, um, we could copy some of the the cues from app dots felt right he's just using a main tag and an h1 uh, I want to see, I want to have something else. I want to say um, h2. Um, actually, you know, uh, check your auth status. Uh, 
Um, and then let's go with a button on click. Uh, we can say, um, I'm just going to do an easy one here, Hand, handle click. I don't think we actually are going to use the event though, so let's just leave it off. Um, console log clicked. Just, just uh, for debugging purposes, if we need it, um, and then we need to do that API call. Um, Now I don't want to do the API call here, right? Because that's that's a lot of um, guts, right? Like I don't want to do the fetch here because um, there's a lot of stuff that we're going to want to be able to do systematically. Um, that's it's inappropriate to have in this this component. So what we're going to end up wanting here is to have a um, um, have a have a get function that we can reference um, from a nearby place. I'm just going to make a new file here called API.js. Um, let's go ahead and create that file itself. API.js. And in this file, we're going to be doing, um, we're going to be actually doing all of the 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 API sort of things. Anytime we need to reach out to um, to the API, to our API that we have set up for our application, um, it's going to go through this module, um, this file. The you know if if we're communicating with some other API to you know integrate a service then I might have a totally separate module for interacting with that because it's going to have its own authentication stuff happening um, so this is for my API um, so uh, just as before I've already done some of this work so I'm just gonna just gonna borrow from myself in the past um, and grab up the um, the old one that I had, and we'll go over it here as I as I copy pasta, and we can sort of refactor if we run into anything that's weird. Um, so I've got an actual send method that's doing doing the things. Um, It's it's the it's in charge of actually of being a generic wrapper for all of the sort of fetch things that we might want to do. Um, now the general advice when you're using Svelte is that you have a bit more complicated um, um, thing here for identifying fetch based on whether you're server side or client side. Um, however, due to the due to the um, uh, the way this is set up, I'm not actually going to use any server side rendering, right? I don't. Uh, the server side rendering is that's that's all this stuff in Django. I don't need to have that happen in in Svelte. I can pass that context in and have that used directly um, by the Svelte component. Um, I may get some arguments from from more savvy JS developers, uh, more savvy, you know. JS Webby developer people saying that you know there is a, a purpose for server side rendering that I'm not that I don't grok here, um, and I would accept that argument. If there's any viewers that want to have that argument, I'm totally happy to to have, give you a platform for that. Um, but 
in the case, the use case that I'm exploring here, I don't need to bother with it. Um, I'm doing just um, uh, just client side stuff. So um, I'm with my API. I'm always interacting JSON, at least for these for these types of things. If I needed to, um, if I was accepting file uploads, then I might need to have a more nuanced send function or a separate send function for um, for dealing with file type stuff. Um, this is right. So whenever you call this method, whenever let, let's look at get. Whenever you call get, uh, you're sending a path that you want to get, um, and optionally you could be sending in some session stuff. Um, I don't actually see session being used anywhere in here though. There's no, there's no sessiony stuff happening at all. So I think that can be omitted. Yeah, so you know, as I'm want to do, I, I sort of borrow code from the past. And so at one point I had something that was dealing with sessions. And when I put it in here, I didn't refactor it to get rid of all of the unnecessary stuff. So that's a sort of uh, a vestige, if you will. So yeah, I think this can be cleaned up uh, a little bit as we take it over to this new project. You know, this over here on the right was just for uh, like for proving the concept in educational use um, for myself. Um, on the left, I'm, I'm putting this out for the world to consume. So um, I guess I'm by virtue of this stream, I'm putting the, the stuff on the right out there to consume as well. But I digress. Um, as I put it up on GitHub, I want it to be a little bit cleaner because people um, people might be looking at that. So I want to set a good example. Um, so I'm going to take the the broad meat of this and clean it up a little bit, though. So uh, session here, I'm going to get rid of. So Git doesn't use data. Um, I'm gonna get rid of session from all of these things real quick. Multiple cursors for the win. Um, yeah, so um, get doesn't use any uh, any data, right? But post does, which you're sending. You know, if you're posting data to the API, and you have to have data there to post. So this send function has to accept data. It has some preconceived notions of what the URL is, right? So here I want to um, define that and say um, that, you know, dang it, we're working with, uh, we're working with uh, localhost here. Now, to get this more ready for production, um, we could make this sort of like an environment variable type of thing that gets popped in there uh, whenever we, um, you know, whenever we, we bring up a container, whenever we, uh, um, in, this, in, the, in the use case for, for Django Svelte, whenever we build the bundles. Um, whatever environment we build that bundle in. Um, I'm just going to leave it at localhost for now. We can make that swap in a later date if, I, if, if it comes to that. Uh, so I've got my send function here. The meat of it is still just about right. I want all this data to be there. Ah, yeah, indented for. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and change this. I like, I actually like for my JavaScript projects to be indented too. There's a lot of, a lot of my Svelte code. You know, it gets it gets pretty deep if I don't indent it shallow. So I just do that. Um, the URL. I don't think we need to.
I don't think we need to mess with protocol at all. Uh, yeah, whatever. Let's just do URL equals. I'm just going to put protocol up front, just by default. Because there's no reason that it wouldn't be instantiated here. It wouldn't exist here. It would be defined here. And then I think this basically works as well. Oh my god, why am I not highlighting right? Um, oh god, we gotta fix these. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we're going to do the fetch with the URL and whatever options there are. Um, the data has already been encoded in the options if it exists. If, uh, so yeah, once we get our response back, um, we take the text of that response and we try to parse that with JSON uh, par parse that it, as JSON and if it um, if it doesn't parse well then we return that JSON whole cloth um, I actually want to console.log that as well if it doesn't come through because that's the easiest way to actually see it um, if for whatever reason the API, um, it, it, the fetch rather, um, promise is is failed, then um, we've got this catch here to deal with that. So, this gives us a general purpose thing for um, touching the API. And we may have to modify this later whenever we start getting into post endpoints. Um, right, so we've defined get at this point. We can just say get, um, and I will use the, let's see, let's look back at that and see how our thing was defined. Base API, or the base URL gets uh, a slash at the end of it, so we don't need a slash at the start of this. We can just do API v1 requires auth, and no data is needed there. We want to await that and see what we get from that. So if we're going to await, we have to async. This will be our response. So let response equal that, and then console. Uh, um, um, if so, uh, is all. Let's do a let's do a little notifier here. Um, uh, if is off. Then uh, let's put a little um, let's put a little uh, uh, header two here that says you're off, um, and then uh, if there we go. so. Now let's make the function, or let's make the, uh, the little variable to catch that. Um, so let is off equal false, and then if res dot good, jumping between JavaScript and Python kind of cooks cooks my brain a little bit on that. Um, so if it's not there at all, then this will be undefined, which is falsy. Uh, if it comes back false, then that would be weird because there's no way that it can do that. Um, 
So if re if that's good, then uh, we'll say uh, is auth is true. Tree. Um, uh, I suppose just to, upon review, we could just do res dot good um, and not have any of this mess. Uh, that means that is auth could become undefined. So, yeah, you know what, I'm just, who cares? Haters will say that this should be simpler, but haters are going to hate. Um, yeah, so now if we uh, bop around here, we may see... Uh, that's not, am I looking in the right spot? No, I'm not looking in the right spot even remotely. Okay, so down here in Svelte public build, I've got app.js being built. I do not have the other being built. I don't have auth component being built yet. It's because rollup.config.js hasn't been reread by rollup yet. So uh, the easiest way to, to see that changed is to just bring the node container down and back up. So I'm just going to make uh, stop and make run. Bring that node container down and back up again. And yeah, we see it. It got created here. Um, there's no CSS in it, so it doesn't actually need a CSS bundle. Um, shouldn't be a problem. But let's go ahead and um, let's get this component into our view. Right, so we have a view up here. Um, we kind of have a view. We have a template rather. We have home.html. Again, this is a really simple demo project. So I didn't put a whole lot of effort into the template hierarchy uh, for this. So, um, and we can have other stuff too. they ought to be different has to do with the um, has to do with the the actual HTML that this produces it's using like ID in there uh, so you shouldn't have duplicated IDs on a page so um, it's possible to extend this to, to make it less um, um, dependent on that but um, that would that would probably make the building of the app a little bit more strange so and you might have to mess with the static file in flight and that's you know that's a static file you shouldn't be messing with it in flight so um, yeah for now it's got to be a different component name in each usage on a single template uh, and we can have multiple different components Is that a bit of a and so I'll do another display spelled here. This time I'm displaying off component component dot spelt. spelt. 
Um, and in this case, I don't have any. I don't have any context to pass into the component. Um, so let's hit go on this, and let's see what it comes out like. Where did it go? There it is. Okay. All right. So we've got a thing down here. Check your auth status. If I check my auth, uh, uh, I want it. I want it to tell me. So let's pull up the console. Let's see what the deal is. Oh my. 404. Did I misspell it? I probably misspelled it. Because it looks looks okay. Let's pull it up here. There we are. Requires auth. Isn't that isn't that right? Requires auth. Ah, yeah. It's the trailing slash. Well, you know what? I like trailing slashes, so I'm putting them in. I'm putting them in. You can deal with it. All right, so now I click check off. It tells me it's clicked. It tells me I'm forbidden. So, again, suck an egg. Um, and it's because we're not logged in. So let's go ahead and get ourselves logged in. Um, logging in requires a bunch of stuff to happen, but uh, not really if, dang it, I still don't want secure. It's not a problem because uh, the Django admin lets you do that stuff basically for free. So Matt matters type password cool so I'm logged in now if I go back to the home page and I check my auth hey you're off I love it um, so what we're seeing here is that the underlying session that the um, that the the, the client has, the browser has, is passing through um, directly through that fetch uh, without having any complication on the AP, on, on our side dealing with the API. Uh, that is to say on the front end side. Um, so yeah, the way that this comes together means that the authentication story that you have in place on your Django service doesn't have to change at all. Um, it, you can basically sit as it is, it, as long as you're using some session authentication already, some, some form of session. Uh, if you're not, then you may have to um, you may have to deal with your, your token or something um, a little bit more carefully. So that's that's all fine and good on a get uh, uh, method call. But if you're posting, uh, then it's a different story. So let's, uh, it's actually getting a little late on this stream to deal with posting. Let's deal with posting next time I stream. Um, I haven't set a schedule for doing any streaming, uh, for coding at least. So um, yeah, if there's anybody that catches this, so far, there's no viewer, so it doesn't really matter what the, uh, uh, what the, uh, you know, what time I choose to stream. But um, if anybody, if I, if I, you know, if anybody cares out there, if anybody's listening, then um, you know, let me know, and I'll, uh, I'll take that into consideration if I, if I'm able to set a recurring schedule to stream. Um, cool. Thank you for watching. If you made it this far, I hope it was useful. So. Uh, yeah, see you next time.